Now today we're looking at a MAP sensor, specifically what it does and how to test it. And it's a good idea to test these sensors. If you're lucky, if you do have to replace it, maybe it's a $20 sensor. On a late model car like this Subaru, it's a $300 sensor. So I'll show the steps on how to really diagnose and see what's going on. Now the MAP sensor typically lives at the throttle body or the intake. Now what this sensor is doing is taking a reading on the barometric pressure. If the sensor starts to go bad, you can have a rough idle, stalling, surging, spark knock. So it's certainly a very, very important sensor. Now don't get this confused from the mass airflow sensor. The mass airflow sensor lives typically on the air box right after the, the air filter. So here's your air filter mass airflow sensor. This is measuring airflow to the engine. This is measuring pressure. Okay, now if you can't find the uh, the sensor on your vehicle, the best thing you could do is a Google image search for your specific vehicle. A lot of times you could pick up exactly where the sensor lives. Now before we start looking at the sensor itself, I want to verify that power is getting to the sensor. For example, if there's a break in the wiring, we can receive a map sensor code even though the sensor is perfectly fine. It's just the wiring. So to do that, right here where my thumb is, there's a tab, press that down, pull back the harness connector, and I'm going to turn the ignition key. I mean, we should see around five volts worth of power. Now to test that, we need a multimeter. Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, local auto parts stores, Sears, they all have these, 20 to $25. But you want the volts DC setting, and then you have two leads, a red and a black. The red lead will go to the harness connector, and black is your ground, which is any good metal point, okay? So the black lead is to ground, red lead goes to the harness connector, and as you can see, we have five volts worth of power that verifies that power is getting to the sensor, so the wiring is good. If you're not getting a reading here, you have a break somewhere in the wiring and you need to track that down. Typically, the red wire is your power wire. Then you have a signal wire and a ground wire, which I'll show you in a moment how to decipher all three, but typically the red is your power wire. So now we know that the wiring is in good shape. Now we need to test the sensor itself. And to do that, we need to turn on the vehicle, let it run, and receive a voltage reading from the sensor. Now before I go into specifics, first I need to know which wire is what. So again, using the multimeter, you have a setting for continuity. Now continuity essentially means two points make a connection. And what you want to see or look for is this symbol. It looks like a wireless, whoops, looks like a wireless hotspot. That's what you want to look for in your multimeter. Now, once we have continuity, you will hear an audible alert. And I'll, whoops, and I'll explain why this is important in a moment. So, if I can get this thing just to sit. So your black wire is going to ground again. We know that the red wire is power. So that's this guy right here. So either this or this is continuity or ground. That's what we're looking for is ground here. And there you go. So that verifies that this is our ground wire. Okay, so this is our power wire, ground wire, and that's our signal wire. That's all it takes. Very, very simple. So if I try this guy, we should have no continuity. Okay, so this is what, again, you want to hear. Okay, let's plug this guy back in. Now get yourself two paper clips. So again, the red wire is our power wire. The middle one here is ground. So once you insert the paper clip, you'll feel a little bit of resistance. That's where the metal prong is inside the harness connector. So that's a good connection. And this guy is our signal wire, okay? And then what you're going to do is start the car and going back to the voltage reading, so volts DC, an average reading is 1.4 to 1.8 volts. Now, if you're receiving code P0107, that is because the volt is under half a volt typically. P0108 is above 4.5 volts. And that those, both of those values are no good. You need 1.4 to 1.8 on average. The best bet you can do is just download the uh, factory repair manual for your vehicle, but this will still give you a pretty good idea 
on regarding the results and what you need to do here. So let me start the car. Now once the car is running, just make sure the two paper clips don't touch, otherwise the car will stall out. You can even ruin the car's computer. So that being said, on average, 1.4 to 1.8 volts is what we want to see. And as you can see, we have 1.6 volts at idle. So that verifies that this sensor is working perfectly fine. Again, P0107, you would see around 0.5 volts or less. And trouble code P0108, you would see 4.5 or more. If you see either of those values, very, very good indication that the sensor is no longer working. Now there is one other test you could do just to see what's going on with this sensor. There is one other thing you can do regarding P0107. If let's say this is a little too intimidating to you, you don't want to start probing different wires and figuring out what's the ground and the, and the signal wire and so forth, you can do an ohms test. Now ohms is just a resistance test that you can do on pretty much every sensor on your vehicle. Now in this case, for this vehicle, we should see around two and a half or less kilo ohms. So if you take a look at the multimeter, there's a symbol that looks like, uh, that's really the omega symbol. That's the symbol you want on your multimeter. Okay, so just to show you, again, that's the guy right there. Now this, for this test, you really need to find out what the reading is for your specific vehicle. Every vehicle is different. So again, this is a 2010 Impreza, 2.5 or less kilo ohms is a good reading. If this was the turbo or the WRX, then the reading is 15 kilo ohms or less. So you need to do a little bit of research. But that being said, if you take this guy out, and what I want to do is take the multimeter, both leads, and I'm going to touch one lead to the prong all the way on the right, and the other lead goes to the other prong all the way on the left. Let me make sure you guys can see this. And we should see, again, around two and a half or less kilo ohms. And there you go, 2.4 kilo ohms. So again, that verifies that this sensor is working correctly. If you do this type of reading, and you're not getting a reading whatsoever, or it's way high, then that's another thing you could do to see what's going on with your sensor. Now, if you do need to replace the sensor, you typically just have two screws or bolts holding the sensor to the throttle body. Remove the bolts, take out the sensor, replace it, and that's it. So these are the steps you want to go through if you have a problem regarding the MAP sensor. In this case, we're lucky. I'm just doing this as a how-to, but if I did have a trouble code for a MAP sensor, these are the exact steps I would do just to pinpoint where the problem is. Again, it's a $300 sensor. You don't want to just replace it if you really have another problem somewhere else. So it's a good idea just to verify what's going on. So thank you for watching, and until next time, we'll see you then.